Good morning. It's early Thursday morning. I don't even know. Maybe just before five. Um, I've just gotten cozy. I'm just making my cup of tea. And I'm going to bunker down and read my book uh, as the sun comes up, which I love doing. I woke up to a Vox message with um, a link to a new Aussie channel. Um, obviously, the hashtag Aussie April is bringing new people out. So I'm going to sit down and, and watch a couple of their videos. I, c I don't know the name or anything. I'll leave the link below in case you want to check them out too. But um, the more Aussie booktube channels the more excited I get, that's for sure. So, yeah, can't wait to sit and watch those guys over a cup of tea. And, um, yeah, get my book. My kettle just boiled. I need tea. Oh, do I need tea? Um, I had a really great night's sleep. Like, really great. You know, when you wake up and you're like, that was a good sleep. That was a good sleep. So... I'm feeling on top of the world and after this tea kicks in it's going to be even better Got my tea. i have to have a herbal tea as soon as i wake up in the morning i'm gonna get this situation sorted <laughs> and then yeah start to read let's go it's it's been weird being in here. I'm in day 14 of isolation. I, I'm so scared to say it, but I, I think I'm symptom free. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but I think I'm symptom free. I do not have a fever anymore. I do not have a sore throat. My heavy chest is not there. The wheezing is not there. I feel... Yeah, I can take a deep breath in like that and not cough. I'm I'm symptom free. Um Wow. But then what if I still <laughs> I just like, you know, what if I think I'm symptom free and I'm not? No. Uh, uh. Every everybody, we're all in the same boat, just second guessing ourselves constantly, aren't we? Okay. Let's watch some new Aussie booktubers and read. Okay. Yes, I discovered. You can see my barn and all those cobbler's pegs waving at me. Oh, so much yard work to do. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to enjoy that morning. I haven't picked up a book yet. I'm going to do it now. Actually, where is it? Oh, here. I've been on Voxer. And then I just hopped on YouTube to see what videos came out overnight because, you know, being on the other side of the world, I get the joy of waking up and seeing all the new videos. I'm right in, back into BookTube now and I'm feeling, um, yeah, really excited to watch every everybody's videos. So now it's time to read. <laughs> Can you see that? Ah, I don't want to scare it away, but it's, oh no, it went away. <laughs> I think during the next what could be six months of schooling from home um, we're going to really investigate the birds around here because they're just so beautiful I just totally missed that parrot it was amazing oh, I also love this leaf and I've been watching this leaf since I've been lying in that bed so much being unwell it's a heart shape <laughs> in amongst all the cobbler's pegs. Oh, they're terrible. But I've looked at this leaf on that tr this trunk and thought it's sending me love. It's sending me love. <laughs> the things, but I just think, oh, it's just lovely. I don't want it to go away. Does everyone have cobbler's pegs in their lives? These are really bad, tall ones, but they were flowering before before they opened up to be these things that gets before they open up to be these things that get stuck in your clothes see them they come off and stick on you they don't hurt you they're not spiky but there were so many butterflies and bees flying around there I didn't want to cut them down but now they've seeded and so yeah that's a problem 
but the butterflies were loving it. Okay, Chuck noise. Love living on a highway. Okay, that was a little distraction. I am going to open up my book and read now. Right, let's do it. The point I left off on last night was the author inserting herself into this work and it, it I, I'm two pages in from where I was yesterday and it's happened twice already and she's just made this really terrible claim about the tourists coming to Tasmania and then how she feels about you know, people taking over the land for tourism and then kind of compares that to how the Aboriginal people felt that they, all the foreigners arriving and not leaving again and taking up residence and um, making you beholden to them and establishing their own rules. And I was kind of like, I think it's a little different um, nobody's, you know, waging war on you and nobody is like killing, you know, entire communities of your people and yeah, at torturing you and like it, it just was a bit, you know, far fetched, I think. So that just made me go, no. And each time she inserts herself, like I'm at, I'm at great. And then each time she inserts herself, I just move a little bit further back. Every time she has, you know, it's like she's got so much to say about Australian politics, about world politics, because she's brought this woman in from the UN. So she can make comment on world politics as well. So every time she inserts herself like that and, and, you know, makes ridiculous comparisons between tourism and invasion of a culture. I kind of I kind of move a bit further back. And once I'm back, it's hard to get me back up to grade again, you know, like once you start to chip away at it, it's hard to make me come back. Um she's calling out her brother for shit decisions, which is great, but yeah, I just We'll just we'll just keep going and see how we go. But if that if that comes in more and more, then this book's gonna get harder and harder for me to kind of see past all of that stuff. Anyway, just just updating you with my thoughts. Okay. I'm moving on from that passage about the First Nations people. I mean, honestly, that's just fucking ridiculous. But anyway. Let it go. Cup of tea. Sip of tea. Okay. Letting it go. Okay. Back again. Another thing she keeps talking about is refugees. She's got a very strong, obviously a very strong stance on, um, you know, how refugees are treated in the world, which I agree with, but it doesn't fit with this story. Like it, it has no bearing on this story. And she's brought it up a few times now. It's also a huge Chinese bashing expedition as well. It's just so, like, honestly, just calm down and go back. Go back to this political drama that you created. Just go back there and sit with it. We don't, we don't need to worry about the radical Muslims and things like that. Just go back to your little story about the bridge and the island don't make it too big and 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 work in that framework because it works there it doesn't work when you start what does postulating mean is that what i'm looking for when you start getting on your soapbox about things that just because you want to 
you want to voice your opinion somewhere. So you decided to do it in this real chunky book. Anyway, I'm going to let it go for now. And I'll talk to you when I've calmed down a little bit because I'm finding problems in a lot of this. I'm finding problems in a lot of this. This is when we're in the head of the um, the main character. I don't even know what her name is anymore. Ace. When we're in her head and she's thinking about things because she's a UN worker, then she starts to kind of talk through all of the all of the political point scoring that Heather Rose wants to wants to get. So when she starts to talk in her own head, that's when we go. When we're in dialogue and we're talking about Tasmania, we're fine. But when she's on her own thinking about things, that's when it gets a little crazy. Okay, I'm letting it go. Talk to you later. Um, I'm talking to Jacqueline now on, um, on Voxer about this book because this is I heard about this from her and um yeah but she said I'm ruining the surprise for her on the vlogs so I'm going to talk to you now instead I just rolled my eyes not about the political stuff about something different <laughs> I'm doing a lot of eye rolling this morning um there's I think there's a very obvious romance developing. And when these two people met, I was like, oh, this is going to be a romance. And and after the chapter about her thoughts about the state of the world and the Americans and the Chinese and um, the terrible fucking comparison with the First Nations people, but anyway... And the refugees and all of the things that Heather Rose decided that she needed to include in this book. The end of it, she's buzzed, she's had a joint, she's drinking red wine. She decides, like, she's supposed to be the conflict, conflict resolution thing and this guy is totally involved in this bridge. She decides to go to his house. That's the end of that chapter and then I open it up and, you know, like, she's at his house for the next chapter and I'm just like rolling my eyes like obviously this romance is going to play out or something you know her affection towards him is going to affect her job like cliche as hell oh anyway ranting just having a huge rant I suppose I better read this chapter about her Showing up at old mate's house. Wish me luck. Can you read that first line? Oh, good Lord. This book is doing a number on me. Um, during the shitty um, chapter about her going to visit old mate, she talked about the um, green lights of the Aurora. And I was like, my gosh. You know, Everyone talks about the northern lights, which you can see from where? Like up top of Europe somewhere. <laughs> Scandinavia? Iceland? I don't know. But there's the southern lights too. And of course I knew there were the southern lights, but I didn't think about them. And so I've just gone on a big binge of um, wanting to see the southern lights. So I did some, and going to Bruny Island, and so I've done this big Airbnb research, but unfortunately, the best time to see the Southern Lights is in the winter, and all of our state, you can't travel in Australia anymore from state to state, unless you quarantine for 14 days where you land when you get there, so um, yeah, I can't do it this winter. But maybe next winter we can rent a cabin. I mean, there's amazing cabins. It's untouched, this island. Yeah, there's these cabins that just surrounded by forestry that go onto the beach. Like you walk onto the sand and there's trees all behind you. Like I just, being, living on the east coast of Australia, I don't know what that is like because it's so developed. Um... So, yeah, it just looks wonderful. Anyway, a plan for future Natalie is forming. So I got something good out of that crappy chapter.
my first exercise I've done in a long time. 35 minutes. I cut the class short. She's still doing that sort of thing and I bailed. I totally bailed on that move. Too hard basket for today. What are we having for dinner? There's the cry of the day. I have absolutely no idea what we're having for dinner. Oh, yes, I do. I put something in the slow cooker. <sighs> President Natale really thanks Pastor Natale. Oh, look, I'm just gonna boil up some bloody potatoes and that can be it. Ah, oh, what a day, guys. Um, it's been um i don't know what it's been today lots of hanging out with the kids i do the morning shift with the kids and then the afternoon shift with work so i just finished work just then it is quarter to five they're already looking for dinner bloody hell oh god what do they want <laughs> what's wrong <laughs> Rub your butt on my window. So I'm just gonna put dinner on and then I'm I'm out and I'm gonna read and read and read. So many people in the comments yesterday, thank you for commenting, I will reply. Um said what did they say? That they loved bruning. So I feel like there's an ending coming that will help me. My fingers are crossed on that. Anyway, I just need to turn off from work and okay. <laughs> I'll turn this way because there's naked butts. Get in the shower. Um, I just need to turn off from work and sort this out and then sit and just read and read and read. That's what I really feel like doing with tea. My chest is cold again. So, okay, right. It's, it's a disaster zone. Let's get cleaning. I'd show you something I'm really proud of. I don't do well with house plants, but my friend gave me this. Oh, can you see it? This fiddle leaf when we moved into the house, and the bottoms are a bit ratty, but there's all new shoots at the top. It just loves it here, and I just feed it old, old um, tea, <laughs> like our cold tea, and it seems to work. So I just love that it's growing taller and. One of those little achievements I need to take where I can. <laughs> Hi. I've got the green background on the bed. I forgot how comfy it is. This bed is amazing. Um, I've been reading, but I'm slowly starting to fall off to sleep. And Danny's bringing me a cup of tea. And then I'm going to get really tired. So I'm going to end the vlog here. I didn't finish the book, obviously. I've still got all that to go. Um, but it will happen tomorrow and then I'll be able to kind of sum up my feelings on this book hopefully a lot less cranky <laughs> okay guys I'm going to talk to you tomorrow thanks for hanging out with me today bye